Why Hybrid Animals Can't Survive in the Wild Hybrid animals have puzzled scientists for hundreds of years. For decades, it was believed that two different species can't interbreed, and that's what makes them, well, different species. However, people all around the world have intentionally produced hybrids that carry the best of both parent species, breaking the biological concept of species. What makes it even more confusing is that every year, scientists discover more and more hybridization occurring naturally in the wild. Some speculate that human activity negatively impacts the habitats of certain species, pushing their populations into smaller areas where they're most likely to interbreed. This is Wild Facts, and today we're going to tell you the story of hybrid animals and explain what kind of problems they face and why, in most cases, they can't survive in the wild. Before we start, consider subscribing to our channel and clicking the notification bell so you're the first one to see our new video. Hybrids in Captivity Hybrid animals are the result of breeding two distinct animal species, for example, a male lion and a female tiger. The offspring of such is called a liger, but what makes it a hybrid and not a separate species? The most popular definition follows a biological species concept, and according to it, a species is a group of animals that can breed together and produce fertile offspring. On the other hand, two separate species usually can't interbreed and produce fertile offspring. However, female ligers are fertile and can mate with lions or tigers, producing even more confusing hybrids, la ligers or to ligers. Such cases break the biological concept of species, and to this day, scientists can't reach a consensus on what makes a separate species. That said, it's important to mention that most infertile hybrids only occur in captivity where they're intentionally or even accidentally bred in zoos or animal reservations. In the case of the ligers, it makes perfect sense because African lions inhabit sub-Saharan Africa, while the tiger can be found in Southeast Asia and parts of Siberia. As a result, these two species can't meet in the wild and reproduce naturally. When you look at it from an evolutionary point of view, these big cats have adapted to vastly different environments, and their genes are too different to produce healthy offspring. This leads to one of the reasons why hybrid animals can't survive in the wild. Due to their genetic incompatibility between the parent species, hybrids are often afflicted with health problems, which in turn lowers their chances of survival if such hybrids would occur in the wild. Ligers suffer from a plethora of health problems in addition to sterility, including arthritis, organ failure, and neurological defects. The same applies to most big cats or panthera hybrids because despite belonging to the same genus, they are genetically too different to produce healthy offspring. There are many cases of such man-made hybrids bred in captivity that were clearly unfit for survival in the wild. For example, the genus Loxodana includes two species of African elephants, and the genus Elephus includes a single extant species, the Asian elephant. All three species are commonly called elephants, but they belong to an entirely different genera and split between 1.9 million and 6.7 million years ago. While it sounds like a long time ago, all three species have the same number of chromosomes, 56, and they've been interbred at least once. Mahdi was an African and Asian elephant hybrid bred in the Chester Zoo in England in 1978. While its parent species had the same number of chromosomes, the genetic difference was too big for Mahdi to be healthy, and she was born underweight at about 60 pounds, or 27 kilograms, and unfortunately passed away just 10 days after her birth. But not all hybrids in captivity suffer a similar fate. Beefalo are offspring of domestic cattle and the American bison, and they're bred for meat production with relative success. While first-generation bulls were sterile, enthusiasts eventually cracked the genetic riddle and managed to breed fertile bulls by backcrossing fertile beefalo cows with domestic bulls. As a result, beefalo aren't pure hybrids and carry 5 eighths of domestic cattle genetics and 3 eighths of bison genetics. But that's what makes them completely healthy and suitable for cattle farming. In fact, their meat is more nutritious than usual beef and is increasing in popularity among farmers in the U.S. year after year. To conclude, most hybrid animals that couldn't survive in the wild are those that couldn't even occur naturally in the first place. The distance between their populations in the wild is a proxy for vast genetic differences, which makes their hybrid offspring in captivity unhealthy. But what about hybrid animals that occur in the wild? Do they suffer from health problems? Natural hybrids. Some hybrid animals occur naturally, and most of them can survive and even flourish in the wild just fine. For example, koi wolves are a natural hybrid of coyotes and wolves that live in North America. These animals are perfectly healthy and have been even known to outcompete their parent species in some areas. 
Interestingly, genome studies reveal that almost every gray wolf in North America carries some coyote genes. And it shouldn't come as a surprise because these two species diverged just between 55,000 and 117,000 years ago, meaning their genetic makeup is relatively similar. They also have the same number of chromosomes, that being 78, allowing for healthy hybrid offspring. Koi wolves are typically larger than coyotes, but smaller than wolves, weighing between 35 and 45 pounds, or 15.8 to 20.4 kilograms. They have a mix of physical characteristics from both parent species, including a coat of fur that is usually a mix of brown, gray, and black, and a bushy tail. Koi wolves also have larger feet and longer snouts than coyotes. They are found throughout North America, from Alaska and Canada all the way down to northern United States, and most commonly inhabit forested areas, but can also live in more urban environments where they sometimes scavenge for food. While there have been a couple of recorded human attacks, this animal hybrid isn't considered to be a threat to humans and is actually quite shy around people. That said, koi wolves are excellent hunters and are known to prey on deer, rabbits, and other small mammals. They will also eat fruit and vegetables, making them one of the most versatile predators in North America. Such versatility allowed their population to flourish and according to some estimates has exceeded one million individuals. While koi wolves are healthy and fit hybrids, they don't cause a threat to the coyote or wolf populations in North America. The same cannot be said about the salamander hybrid, which arose from the California tiger salamander and the barred tiger salamander. The former species is native to the region, while the latter is an invasive species. In recent years, biologists have discovered a sizable and sustained population of such salamander hybrids, which are outcompeting both parent species. While it might sound like a good thing, it can actually push them to the brink of extinction. Scientists are baffled by this hybrid because the California tiger salamander and the barred tiger salamander diverged millions of years ago, but for whatever reason could produce hybrids that are even fitter than themselves. Another similar example, yet a slightly different example of hybridization in nature causing problems is hybrids between Cuban crocodiles and the American crocodile. The former species is critically endangered while the latter is vulnerable. The population of both species overlap, which results in the purebred Cuban crocodile population diminishing. It's entirely possible that after several decades or centuries, this species would end up completely assimilating with the American crocodile species, virtually going extinct. To conclude, not all hybrid animals are doomed to a life of poor health and early death, and some can even thrive in the wild. It all comes down to the specific parent species involved and how long ago they diverged from each other. When the genetic difference is too big, the hybrid offspring is usually unhealthy, but when the parent species are closely related, the hybrid can be perfectly healthy and even outperform its parent species, which can cause a whole new set of problems on a larger scale. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave your thoughts and suggestions for future videos in the comments section down below. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell, and check out our previous videos. Until next time.